reached out for my dreams. I reached out for my vision. I reached out for help that I thought I needed. Cause reaching out, reaching out is the proof of passion. Hello again, our most valued student. My name is Confident. Welcome to our lesson on the laws of exponents. And in this lesson, I'm going to be introducing the laws of exponents. Now, there won't be any much examples given, but the examples will follow in the other lessons. But I'm just going to walk you through the laws of exponents. Now, the first law in this case, which is, which is much common and simpler, it is saying a to the power m times a to the power n is equal to a to the power m plus n. So what is it saying? It says when the bases are the same and there is a multiplication sign, what you must do is the exponents that are given, you must add them. So when you see a multiplication sign with the same base, you add the exponents. What about the second law? It says when you see the same base and you see the exponents, but there is a division sign, what you do to the exponents? You subtract the exponents. And then the next one is when there is an exponent a to the power n, m, multiplied with another exponent, what you simply do is you multiply the exponents. For example, if I'm given 2 squared with a 3, so what I'm having is 2 to the power 2 times a 3, which is equal to 2 to the power of 6. That's what it, that, that law is saying. And also, in the second one, in the, that is law number 3, in law number 4, it says when there is a bracket, in this case a, b, inside uh, expressed to the power m, it means each and every um, um, variable inside is also affected by the exponent. For example, if I can say 4x to the power 3, what it simply means, it means 4 is affected by the power of 3 as well as x is aff affected by the power of 3. You can simplify to now say what is 4 to the power of 3 and then you simplify that and then uh, if I can take a calculator and see 4 to the power of 3 for cubed, it's 64. So I will have 64x cubed. So this then becomes the answer. And then if you go to law number 5, law number 5, it says now if what is inside the exponent is a over b, similar to the law we just did in law number 4, it means that expo the exponent is affecting both the a and the b. So in this case, if I'm having now x over 4 to the power of 3 like I did previously, this then will mean x cubed over 4 cubed, which is equal to x cubed over 64 like we did previously. And then there is law number 6, and this one is law number 6. What is law number 6 saying? It says 1 over a to the power of m is a to the power negative 1. So whenever there is a division sign, then you introduce a negative. So for example, 1 over 2 is equal to, because 1 over 2, it looks like there is nothing but there is a power 1 there. So how do you write it? It's same as 2 to the power negative 1. Same as 1 over 3 to the power 4 is same as 3 to the power negative 4. Sorry about that. Negative 4. So what does it mean? It means when you remove the division sign, you introduce a negative. Now, this law can work in both directions. If I'm given 5 to the power negative 2, this is same as 1 over. That is the way of getting rid of that negative. If one, it's 1 over 5, now you write as 5 to the power of 2. So this is another way of writing that law. Now let us move on to look at the other laws. It says 1 over a to the power negative m is a to the power m. In actual fact, what is happening in this law? If we can take this law altogether, 
is this is same as 1 over because it's negative for me to get a rid of negative it's same as 1 over a to the power of m so 1 over 1 over is same as a to the power of m so in short if you see a negative and a division sign and it means you take out to be a positive so that is another law that you must also bear in mind is an important law it actually saves you from lots of working now if we can look at the other laws it says a b over a to the power of negative m this is similar or a continuation of the law we just looked at but in this case you can see that the b has gone on top and the a has gone below why because in this law it's same as if you if if you want to get rid of the negative if i say a over b to the power negative m this is same as 1 over a over b it's 1 over a over b to the power of m which is equal to 1 over remember the bracket means a is under m and b is under m this is same as 1 divided by a m over b m introducing a times which is equal to 1 times b m over a m which is similar to the answer that is just given in that particular law so this is the laws actually give you a way of working faster your problems without having for you to go through all these stages like the one that I was showing. Now the next law that we are given, if I can pull up my page, the next law that we are given it says the nth root of a, this is the nth root of a is equal to but now the first thing that I wanted to remind you if they write like this it means there is a square root so in this case this is same as a to the power 1 over 2 because there is a 2 that is hidden there now if it is not a 2 they will specify by putting maybe an n so if it's an n is equal to a to the power 1 over n the nth root becomes the denominator in there you can in, in other ways, maybe I need to come up with an example. If I can say fifth root of, t let me not use five, let me use maybe two. This is same as two over. Now the five is the denominator. And because there is a one there, the one goes on top. You understand? So as I said, if it was just a square root of 2, so what you are having, you are having a 2 there and you are having a 1 there. So this is same as 2. Now the 2 comes below and the 1 goes on top. So it's 2 to the power a half. Now if we extend this law into the second one, which is the nth root of a to the power m, is a to the power m over n this is a, a similar example i can give let's say um 15 and then there is a 3 and then there is a 4 there is cube root of 15 to the power 4 what you are having is you will be having 15 now because the cube root means the 3 is below and the 4 means it's on top. That's what it means. So sometimes they give problems in a very intelligent way whereby if they can give you, they say simplify. Maybe they say simplify cube root of 16 to the power of 4 without using a calculator. So the first thing that you must do, you are going to have to say this is same as 16 and then remember it's 4 over 3 now you continue now to say by the way 16 is same as 2 to the power 4 times 4 over 3 this is same as 
2 to the power 4 over 1 times 4 over 3 times 4 over 3. This is same as 2 to the power 16 over 3. So these are ways of trying to simplify such problems using the laws of exponents. And the most uh, simple law that you must remember is that any number to the power of 0, such as a to the power of 0, is equal to 1, provided that a is not equal to 0. So if I say 100 to the power of 0, remember, it is equal to a 1. So as I said, these are the laws of exponents that you are supposed to be well aware of. It can make your life easy. You can work your methods much faster if these laws are always used in con in the context of what you are given. And they are usually provided in your question paper, at the back of your question paper. So in a, if you forget a law, you can always refer to the, the back of your question paper in the final exam. Thank you. I reach out for my dreams. I reach out for my vision. I reach out for help that I thought I needed. Cause reaching out, reaching out is the proof of